Hello everyone, and today I'm going to be talking about a major update I released today for Chivalry Total War Remastered. So, uh, there have been some huge updates to all aspects of the game, but uh, most importantly we have a lot of new factions. So as you can see, all of these factions after the Danish Mendids are new factions. So we've got uh, Scotland, We've got Ireland, and we've got um, uh, Gwynedd and Powys for um, representing a Welsh faction. And uh, those are the new factions for Britain to make the British campaign, or the uh, campaigns on the British Isles a little more interesting, and we have a lot more planned for that. Also for Italy, we've added Milan, we've added Genoa, and we've added Venice. The Republic of Venice. Now, uh, these factions in the early era campaign, um, it's not really their time to shine. It's more of the Republic of Pisa's era, and that's why the original chivalry had Pisa in there rather than these factions. But uh, they're in there now. And, of course, they'll play a bigger role in the high and late era campaigns once those are out. And, again, yes, I'm working on high and late era campaigns. Uh, we also have the Taifa factions that we've added. So the Taifa kingdoms were kingdoms that uh, sort of splintered off uh, following the collapse of the Caliphate of Cordoba, the Umayyad Caliphate of Cordoba. And uh, we've added six Taifa kingdoms, uh, thanks to our historians uh, Atramb and Zenati for all of their help in all aspects of adding these factions. So we've got the Taifa of Granada, in the southern tip of the Iberian Peninsula, we've got Badajoz in the sort of western section, southern Portugal, and southwestern Spain. We've got the Taifa of Denia, which has an interesting start position, which uh, it controls Denia. It has a fleet, the only Taifa kingdom with a fleet, and it controls the uh, Balearic Islands as well. You have Seville, probably the most powerful of the Taifa kingdoms. They control Cordoba and Seville. You've got the Taifa of Toledo, which is powerful, but it it is sort of surrounded. It's right in the middle of the action. You've got Zaragoza, uh, which is the northernmost Taifa. It's bordered by Leon and Aragon. And in North Africa, we've got a new faction, the Hamadid Emirate, which um, is sort of in the in between the Almoravids and the Zirid Emirate of Tunisia, and uh, they are they are quite powerful in this early part. But we've also added the Banu Hilal hordes, and uh, they they can really mess up the Hamadids really early on here because historically they destroyed the Hamadid capital in 1090 A.D. Now the Hamadids survived after that, but they were really damaged by that Banu Hilal campaign, we have also made certain factions more historical, given them a more historical facelift. So instead of just the Moors, a generic faction, we have the Almoravid Empire starting in North Africa. It does not control southern Iberia like it does in a Vanilla Chivalry, and of course that had to be done to sort of make the Iberian campaign more interesting for gameplay purposes in the original chivalry because they could not represent those Taifa kingdoms. But now that we can represent those kingdoms, it's better to have them in there and then the Almoravids start in North Africa, where they should be. And instead of the kingdom of uh, Castile, Leon, we have the kingdom of Leon. So that's uh, been given an overhaul. It's now purple. Uh, and uh, in addition to a lot of other changes, we've also given Aragon a historical overhaul. So their start position is now the proper historical start position for the Kingdom of Aragon. And additionally, uh, they no longer have the sort of coat of arms of uh, Barcelona, the county of Barcelona, uh, or the crown of Aragon. They have the proper kingdom, early era Kingdom of Aragon coat of arms. Now, eventually, I will be adding a Crown of Aragon formable faction, but in any case. And we also have the Kingdom of Gwynedd and Powys, which, oh, I mentioned before, is sort of North Wales. 
And we also have Anjou, which is uh, another faction, uh, important faction for the early era, because, of course, the, the dynasty of Anjou, the Angevin dynasty, eventually, you know, took control of uh, England, the Kingdom of England, and most of France. So the Angevin Empire was quite powerful uh, into the high era, into the 13th century. And then, of course, they ended up controlling the Kingdom of Naples, and that, that'll be represented in the late era. So adding the Angevins, adding Anjou was very important. Uh, in any case, let me uh, zoom over here to the campaign map and show off uh, some of these changes. And as you can see, I have chosen to be the Taifa of Denia here, uh, one of the new factions I've added. And uh, the Taifa of Denia, of course, is quite interesting because actually uh, th they tried to invade Sardinia and conquer Sardinia <clears throat> a few decades before the start date here, 1072 AD, and they were actually repelled by Genoa, Pisa, and uh, the papacy. So Taifa of Denia, interesting faction indeed. It would have been a better start date for them a few decades earlier, but in any case... And additionally, the Taifa of Denia actually has a unique bodyguard unit that I've added for them, the Sakalib bodyguard. So these are uh, slave warriors of Slavic origin who have been brought to the Iberian Peninsula to be sort of like Iberian Rulam cavalry, essentially. And they are the Sakalib uh, bodyguards. And they are unique for Denia. Actually, I believe Denia is the only uh, faction that has them because their dynasty was actually um, made up of these uh, Slavic warriors, Sakalib warriors. So in any case, uh, as you can see, we are in a pretty small position, but we're in a pretty good position because we control not only Denia on the mainland, but we also control... Alma and the Balearic Islands. So let's get our troops together. Let's train up some more troops. And we'll go attack uh, the rebel town of Mercia. Of course, uh, Denia is a new town. So actually, in original chivalry, Mercia is the city of this region, and then the region name is Denia. But that doesn't make sense, because Denia is another city. So we have Denia and we have Mercia. Uh, all right, so let us construct, I suppose, control posts, and then that'll allow us to uh, train spear militia. And that would be pretty okay. And that would improve our uh, tax income. So let's go for that. We're also at war with uh, Pisa and Genoa, so we might want to look out for them. But other than that, let's uh, get into a battle here and uh, show off some of the stuff here. All right, so now we're getting into a battle here with the Mercian garrison. And of course, you can see the um, there is a mosque in the city. Of course, this is a this is from the uh, from fire and sword with fire and sword mod. It was ported from Medieval Two, I believe. But uh, yeah. In any case, let's get our troops together. Let's show off some of these Andalusian uh, forces because a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people I don't think have played as an as a Andalusian faction. So we've got our Andalusian heavy cavalry here, our Sakalib bodyguards. Uh, we've got two units of Sakalib bodyguards because I got our uh, crown prince into the fray here. We've got some basic archers. We've got some Mutawiya infantry, axemen. And we've got some Andalusian uh, medium infantry. Some These are pretty decent spearmen. So let's start the battle. Let's break down these gates. All right, so we've breached Mercia's walls in two sections. We've gotten our air into the town square where he is currently engaged with enemy archers. 
and our infantry are engaged with the enemy infantry on a couple of fronts here. All right. And we were able to defeat the Mercian garrison, and now we've taken Mercia. So that's essentially the start of the Typha of Denia campaign. So, of course, uh, how do you proceed? Uh, you can proceed in many ways. One of the ways is uh, you can focus on expanding on the mainland if you want. Or, if you want, you can try and expand uh, historically, perhaps. Maybe take Sardinia, maybe attack Sicily, try to make a sort of uh, pirate or uh, island empire. And that would be quite interesting. But in any case, let us toggle the fog of war here and show off some of these changes. So, uh, as you can see, Iberia looks totally different compared to the old Iberia. The old Iberian Peninsula had a very, very much a... Uh, it was a simplified start position, which was due to the limitations of the original Rome Total War. But now, due to... Rome Total War Remastered, we can make everything more accurate, as accurate as we want. So in North Africa, as you can see, we've got a more accurate Almoravid faction. Of course, the Moors in the original chivalry, they control, which was more based on the Almohads than the Almoravids, they controlled the only Fas in North Africa, uh, in part of Morocco. And they didn't control Marrakesh, even though Marrakesh was actually founded to be the capital of the Almoravid Empire. So that didn't make any sense that they, they didn't control Marrakesh. And they controlled southern Iberia. Now that was not correct because southern Iberia was controlled by all these Taifa kingdoms, right? So now I've added in, as I said, Zaragoza, the Taifa of Toledo, Badajoz, uh, Seville and uh, Granada and Denia. And I think it makes the Iberian campaigns much more interesting than they used to be. Additionally, we've got uh, historical overhauls for both Lyon and for the Kingdom of Aragon. So uh, Lyon has more accurate heraldry for this time period uh, in terms of, you know, the flags, banners, things of that nature. Thank you to Atrom for all of those. Uh, so, and uh, Salamanca has been added as a sort of border province. Additionally, kingdom, the Kingdom of Aragon, of course, had the sort of county of Barcelona or Crown of Aragon heraldry in the original chivalry, and the Crown of Aragon still exists in the files. It's going to be a formable faction uh, in the next update, not in this update. But, as you can see, we've got fully historical Kingdom of Aragon here. And this goes for the uh, units as well, in terms of officers, uh, standard holders, and generals. They have the correct uh, heraldry now. In addition uh, to the Iberian overhaul, as I said, we, we've got historical Almoravids here, better, more accurate banners, uh, things of that nature. And we've also added the Hamadid, emirate and it looks like the banu hilal have decided to only focus on them at the moment and i mean historically the banu hilal did destroy alcala the capital of the hamadids in 1090 so uh i didn't encourage them to do that they went and did that themselves additionally and the hamadid army is of course off doing something else and the zirids have a more historical start position. The Banu Hilal had actually forced, uh, defeated the Zirids, and the Zirids had actually retreated from their old capital, Kairawan, to um, Mahdiya on the coast here. So this is their new historical start position, and they actually start with a fleet. Uh, and I don't know where it is at the moment, but they do start with a fleet, and so you can actually do uh, piracy if you want, do some raiding, like the actual Zirids. Additionally, we've got North Italy completely overhauled. So instead of just having Pisa in Northern Italy, Pisa and the Holy Roman Empire controlling Barona, we've actually got Milan, Genoa, and Venice. And uh, 
I am very happy that we were able to do that because, yeah, North Italy definitely needed some more depth for sure. And we've added a couple, uh, a new um, Northern Balkan province here to help with it, Venice. In France, we've got the County of Anjou as a new faction. And, uh, of course, the Angevins, very important faction, not only for the early era as the Counts of Anjou, but also for the high and late eras. So in the late era, of course, they're going to be the Kingdom of Naples, right? So all of this stuff we're adding here is in preparation for those era campaigns. It, it's all going to help for sure. In Britain, we've got a few new uh, provinces and a couple new factions. So we've got Scotland up in the north, the Kingdom of Scotland. We've got the Kingdom of pa Gwynedd and Powys. Uh, and we've, uh, look, we've got a new general model for uh, the Welsh. Uh, actually, th this general is from Viking Invasion 2. Thank you to them for that. And we've got the Kingdom of Munster for Ireland. So there is a major Irish faction. Now, more work will be done to these factions in the future. But they are fully playable, full rosters. Have, uh, have a blast. Additionally, uh, in... The Levant, uh, I made a video about this before. When you are the Crusaders and you take Edessa, Antioch, Tripoli, or Jerusalem, you can form a Crusader state. So you can form the county of Edessa. It'll be a major faction. And then the horde will continue. The Crusader horde will move on and continue uh, to go and attack wherever they want. Right, so uh, they, uh, the Horde by itself can go and form the other Crusader states, actually. So I think that'll be quite fun, and it'll be super fun to see who can pull off an Edessa campaign, because Antioch, Tripoli, I've tried out personally, and some testers have tried out. Those are hard enough. Edessa, I, d I don't even know. I don't think someone has attempted it yet. But I mean, Edessa did fall in 1144. It was the first to fall. So that makes total sense. We've also uh, added a few more provinces to Western Asia Minor to reflect how important it was, how critical it was. And uh, yeah. Other than that, there are a whole bunch of tweaks all over the place. But again, I think the crowning achievement for this update is the historical overhaul that we've done for the Iberian Peninsula and to a similar extent, to North Africa, which has a bunch of new provinces as well. So I'm really happy about this update. If And I've also fixed a whole bunch of bugs. The river crossing CTD issue, which was an issue with uh, porting an original mod. There was an, there's an additional line in the uh, Desker mounts file in the remaster that I didn't know about that the original file doesn't have. So because uh, I was able to pinpoint that and fix it now it's all fixed so in any case check out the new update in the description below you, if you are already subscribed on steam then your steam version will automatically update but uh, if you're interested in the historical total wars and their mods if you're interested in my mod chivalry total war remastered which is, of course, a port I made of the original Chivalry Total War with a whole bunch of enhancements, as you can see. Then consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video, and I'll see you in the next one later.